Oh, man, who was that last guy in that last video? Boy, that was a really angry guy, man. What do you got to be so angry about, man? Our offense is legit, man. I don't know what you're so angry about. Welcome back, you guys. Hey, in this video, we're going to be discussing the Lions. 48-45 to loss to the Seattle Seahawks, but we're going to be focusing not on the negative defense. No, no, no. Today's a different mood, you guys. Today is an entirely different mood. Today, we're going to focus on our Corvette that we got that we call an offense. So let's dive into it. All right, welcome back to the channel. As you guys already know, I'm Hat and Beard. Let's get right into it, you guys. We're going to run right through this. It shouldn't be too bad. shouldn't be too ugly. There was only a couple negatives on offense, right? I mean, outside of a few penalties, a few injuries, uh, losing Evan Brown kind of sucks. And, uh, you know, we had a couple turnovers. But, look, I'm just going to get it right out of the way, right? First and foremost, if you're one of them people who legitimately takes the stand of, hey, if Jared Goff hadn't have thrown that pick six, we'd have won the game, then just leave. Just leave, the, just leave this video, man, because I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to listen to that bull crap, dude. Look. Jared Goff is not the problem. Jared Goff is the number five fantasy quarterback in the league, and he's on pace to throw 44 touchdowns this year. Jared Goff is exceeding expectations, so a pick six isn't going to cost him. When your defense won't even make your opposing team punt once and can't seem to do anything to get the opposition off the field, regardless of how good your offense plays, you cannot outscore your bad defense. Until until our defense can start to, to really... God, I, I didn't want to talk about defense, man, but until our defense can make us stop, do something to get the opposition off the field, our offense can score as many points as they want, and we're just going to keep losing, guys. So let's let's dive into the offensive statistics, shall we? Let's let's get into our passing attack. Let's look at old Jared Goff. He, you know, he didn't get hurt or nothing, so he played the majority of the game, other than Jack Fox went one for one on some trickery. I love a little trickery, you know. I love a little trickery. Jack Fox was one one for six yards on some trickery to Quintez Cephas. Looking at Jared Goff, he was 26 to 39 for 378 yards, four touchdowns and a pick. We're a run first team. We're a we're a ball control. Really, really, you know, break the back of your opposition's defense by just milking the clock and, and pounding them over and over again with just a stable of running backs that you have because our offensive line is so good that now it's starting to become the uh, whomever you put behind them can run. You know, whether it's Swift, whether it's Willie, I'm sure that if Craig Reynolds had 20 cracks at it, he'd probably rip off 100 yards too, man. But I thought we were a run first team. That's what I was told. That's what I was told all off season. That we're a run first team. Oh, that's right. The NFL is engineered for passing and points. So Jared Goff has to now take on the mantle of a basically like a spread quarterback, man. He's just going to throw the ball. I think this is the this is this is the third game where he's thrown the ball over 30 times. It might be every single game he's thrown the ball over four times. And like I said, he's on pace for almost 5,000 yards and 44 touchdowns. If you would have told me at the beginning of the year that Jared Goff was going to be on pace for 44 touchdowns by the end of the season, I'd tell you that after the first quarter of the year, we'd be easily 3-1. and one. Easily! Easily 3-1, and one, possibly even 4-0, and oh, and we should be if our defense could do anything other than, oh wow, great job, Aiden Hutchinson. You had three sacks against the Washington Commies in the first half of the game, and you've been non-existent ever since then. Oh, great. Tracy Walker. We're good when you're... Oh, nope. Tracy Walker's hurt. Oh, if he's not... If Tracy Walker's not getting ejected from the game, he's he's ejecting himself from the season. One step forward and two steps back, man. I am so sick of having the same conversation over and over and over again. The metrics aren't there. Our defense is bad. Matt Patricia's defense was statistically better than this defense. And it's just... I don't know, man. I, we're not talking about defense, though. We're talking about offense. Jared Goff looked good. 378 yards, man. I mean, he was... 26 39 with scrubs he was playing with scrubs st brown was out swift was out shark is i guess he just wants to collect his bag like good good for you dj shark you fleece the lions organization out of eight million dollars or two million dollars in incentives and you're like i don't care if i hit the two million dollars in incentives you're paying me eight million dollars regardless that's guaranteed money straight cash homie like that good for you dude good good on you you fleeced everybody congratulations and then when the lights are brightest and you have your opportunity to shine and go out there and earn that extra you know two million dollars in incentives and put some film on tape and maybe get yourself either a, a three-year extension you know here in detroit or put enough film out there so that you can go to another organization and get your bag and, and, and show that you're not washed after your stint in Jacksonville. And then, you you know, you have a bounce back opportunity here, man. And you're not taking the opportunities. You're just not, you're not producing in games. You're not giving the, op you're not taking the opportunity when it's handed to you on a silver platter. But look what they did with TJ Hawkinson. They schemed for him. And our offense schemed to force feed TJ Hawkinson the ball. 
And if he started to drop them, they were just going to keep throwing them at him over and over and over again. We basically utilized TJ Hawkinson. We just started force feeding him the way we would do St. Brown. So that all of that production could have been DJ Sharks. All of that... All of that force-fed production could have been DJ Shark, and he's a lot faster than TJ Hawkinson. It could have been more electric. I'm fleecing the Ford family out of $8 million. We'll look at the running game here. Uh, there wasn't much outside of Jay Willie, and I don't mean our other running back, Craig Reynolds, and Justin Jackson, who got a couple of touches, weren't unproductive. I just mean that the bulk of the carries went to Jay Willie. He was very efficient when he touched the ball. And then after our defense just refused to even show up. I mean, I don't even know if that was... Like, dude, I'm pretty sure that a high school team could have put points on that defense because our defense is just so, so atrocious. We kind of had to veer away from the running game. When you're, in a, when you're in a track meet, you automatically get phased out of your... I don't care if your whole scheme is run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. We preach run the ball. We're a running ball first team. My ass, dude, my ass. But Jay Willie, you know, after a while, you kind of get phased out. But he was productive, dude. He, he had 19 carries. I almost said 20 carries. I think he had 20 touches. 20 touches with his one catch that he had. 19 carries, 108 yards, 108 yards, and two touchdowns. He was moving along at 5.7 yards a clip. Plug and play, dude. Plug and play. Remember DeAndre Swift numbers. Plug and play. Sure, Swift probably could have gotten them 100 yards in 15 touches, but he would have been hurt after scoring his second touchdown. Let's be real, DeAndre. Jay Willie now has back-to-back, -back, almost three straight games where he's been more or less the primary running back, and he takes a more physical role than DeAndre Swift. And he also looks to dish out punishment, but he can he can stay healthy. But DeAndre Swift, it's kind of like the old Mike Shanahan, I guess Kyle Shanahan style offense now, where it's like whatever you, whoever you put, you put my dead grandma on the backfield, and she's still rushed for 100 yards behind that offensive line in the Ben Johnson scheme that we got. Craig Reynolds chipped in two two attempts for 30 yards. It's you know pretty simple math. He's moving to 15 yards a clip. They didn't go to him very often, but he was effective when he had when he had his opportunities. He took it. You know, uh, DJ Shark should go to Reynolds and Reynolds, Lions at Law, and ask them to do some consulting work for you to figure out how it is maybe you could take advantage of the opportunities when they come knocking because Reynolds and Reynolds did, and they are much less well-known assets in the NFL than DJ Shark. Craig Reynolds chipping in two for 30. Again, you could you could probably switch him and Jay Willie. If Jay Willie got hurt, I'm not going to have any qualms with Craig Reynolds because I'm starting to feel that it's a scheme style. It's not the individual. It's a scheme style for our running backs. That's, that is a good thing. Our offense is electric. It's awesome. Justin Jackson, two carries, three yards. That's a yard and a half a clip. You know, we he's been up and down off the, off the practice squad. Uh, he's really more of a special teams player, but you even heard the commentator say something that I've been saying for a while. The, the burst, the uh, athleticism that you lose with DeAndre Swift. Justin Jackson. Jackson kind of complements those same those same uh, skill sets. He's not a Jay Willie. He's not a Craig Reynolds. He's a little bit more of a uh, more dynamic runner in space. I, I just like seeing Justin Jackson get some run. I thought he was going to make the original 53-man roster, but we ended up waving him, and he came back in the practice squad. And then I honestly, I think he was been active since week one. So he's. I don't understand that maneuver, but I also don't understand the keeping Austin Siebert maneuver. Why would you keep a kicker? who gets hurt every year and not keep the kicker who did a fantastic job as a rookie in replacement of your hurt kicker. Kali Raymond had one carry for three yards. Uh, they were trying a little trickery again. They're they just trying to get the ball into different players' hands, try and move, distribute the rock a little bit. Uh, Kali Raymond has kind of shown this year why we were hesitant to bring him back. Um, you know, last year he was kind of that dude. But last year, he was dealing with a yet-to-emerge Amon Ra St. Brown and a uh, yet-to-be-even-on-the-team Josh Reynolds. We know the reality of the situation, that Kali Freeman was just productive because of the volume last year. And now he's, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a roster player, man. He's more of a special teams guy. He's kind of what I've been saying in the preseason is that Kali Freeman is more of your special teams guy. And now we brought up Maurice Alexander, which is awesome. Uh, you know, he was actually averaging over 20 yards of return, and he's a very dynamic return man. So Kali Freeman isn't even really contributing in the return game. He's more of just a, a depth piece, you know, and even he got outplayed. We'll, we'll get to the receiving numbers. We'll get to the receiving numbers. Boy, Tom Kennedy. Woo, Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy. And then to round out the rushing attack, Jared Goff had a whopping one attempt for one yard. Because when I think Jared Goff, I think wheels. Let's run through the receiving game real quick. Hawk stepped up. Hey, Hawk, the opportunity was there. And, and you seized on it. It doesn't matter. They're f force feeding you the ball, man. I mean, you were going to be productive whether you wanted to or not. The only thing stopping you was going to be injuries or drops. But Hawk, hey, we got 
Game one, his rookie year, Hawk, who set a very high bar for himself and then just continued to just fail and fail and fail and fail and just 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 limbo under that bar. And then, hey, what do you know? Week four of his fourth, eight catches, 179 yards, good for 22.4 yards uh, a, a catch and two touchdowns. We can all be as high as we want on TJ Hawkinson. And I'm happy, uh, ultimately, I'm happy that TJ Hawkinson was hyper productive like this and that when given the opportunity, when we force feed him the rock, when we spend a whole week scheming to make him the focal point of the offense, wow, what do you know, he's productive. I'm gonna need to see this for the remainder of the season to even consider keeping you around long term man because i can't have this once one game every four years yeah eric ebron could do the same thing man like i i need what i'm gonna need tj hawkinson is i'm gonna need seven targets like you've been getting every game you know you've been averaging like seven targets and we are the most potent offense in the nfl so there is there clearly clearly there are opportunities to be had so when you get your seven target average i'm gonna need you to start bringing in at least five of those and i'm gonna need you to average like 60 to 100 yards a game for the rest of the season the long and short the long and short of all that good job sunday tj hawkinson do it more the number two guy in the receiving game for us was uh josh reynolds which i said in my video last week josh reynolds is really gonna have to step up i've actually liked what i've seen out of josh reynolds ever since he came to detroit he seems to be a guy that understands not just the game of football, but the business side of it. That he has to produce if he wants money to come in to play a game. And all he's done since coming to Detroit has produced. Whether he's been banged up, yeah, he gets a couple drops here or there. But that's why you drafted JMO. That's why you went out and you signed DJ Shark. And he's been outplayed by everybody, including a banged up Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds was hurt too. Josh Reynolds' ankle hurt too, DJ Shark. But Josh Reynolds went out there and balled out. Josh Reynolds went out there and went seven for 81. No, t oh, and a, yeah, yeah, he had a touch. I forgot. Yeah, and a touchdown. Seven for 81 and a touchdown. He's averaging 11.6 yards a catch, dude. That's hey, opportunity. He let it in. There you go, Josh Reynolds. I have no complaints, okay? So between Hawk and Reynolds, those are our top two wide receivers. I mean, Jared Goff did a good job distributing the rock, but everybody else is kind of more noteworthy, not really like discussion worthy. So we're just gonna run through. Oh, never mind. Never mind. There is one more man that I wish to discuss. One more wide receiver that I wish to discuss, and that is the number three wide receiver on the day. That is practice squad preseason superhero Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy came in and he only had three catches for 54 yards. Three catches for 54 yards. But his catches that he made couldn't have, they were they were important. They were drive-saving catches. Tom Kennedy, when the when when the lights were brightest and the opportunity was banging on his door, he waddled right over to that door and he opened it up and he said, Come on in, I've got tea for you, bud. <laughs> Unlike DJ Shark. But hey, Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy, we've been talking about Tom Kennedy all preseason. We've been talking about Tom Kennedy all last preseason. Tom Kennedy showed up. Now the question is, the question is, is this a Tom Kennedy is sweet? Possibly. Is this Tom Kennedy is sweet? Or is this Ben Johnson put Tom Kennedy in a position to succeed? Because Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson, dude. Ben Johnson is being 100% that dude right now. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of Tom Kennedy has been in the system now long enough to understand what Jared Goff's going to do on the field. As well as Tom Kennedy, is he's a scrapper. He's a fighter. There's a reason why the Lions have tried to cut him every year, and they just can't do it, man, because he's too scrappy. He's too gritty. Oh, my God, Dan Campbell. You found another Dan Campbell guy. And when you give him... When you give an actual guy that buys into the system and buys into your way of coaching, when you give him opportunities, he takes it. Exactly, he takes it. He doesn't shark it away. Tom Kennedy, my man. Dude, good on you. Way to step up. Three big, huge catches, man. I'd like to see you involved a little bit more. I know that once St. Brown's back, you're going to be kind of phased out a little bit more. And JMO's coming back. Look, the opportunities probably aren't going to be there. I was just really glad to see him actually produce in a, in a, in a regular season NFL game. I was happy to see my boy Tom Kennedy out there. Just balling. Just doing just doing Tom Kennedy things, man. The rest of the team was pretty insignificant. Uh, Kali Freeman had three for 38. Quintez Cephas at two for 15. Hey, Quintez Cephas sighting, including that one trickery catch from, from Jack Fox. So, hey, Quintez Cephas, as far as a wide receiver, you're kind of a bust, dude. But, man, Quintez Cephas has been playing his balls off on, on special teams. So, I'll, I'll give it to you, man. Good on you, Quintez Cephas. I, I knocked you a lot. 
I, I bashed you a lot in the preseason, man. I thought they should have cut you because I thought you was a bust, dude. I thought you was washed, and I do still think you're kind of washed. But if you're going to come out and produce on, on special teams like that, special teams has to be special. If you're going to take the opportunities that are given to you and make the most of them, how can I be mad at that? So good on you, Quintez Cephas. Craig Reynolds had one catch for 12 yards. Justin Jackson had two catches for four yards and a touchdown. Again, that's kind of what I've been saying about Justin Jackson is that he is a little bit more dynamic than, say, Jay Willie. He's more of a DeAndre Swift-esque. I have been saying since the preseason, DeAndre Swift doesn't have the durability to sustain the workload that we want out of him. And wow, imagine that. Uh, week two, he was on a pitch count. Week three, he had very flat tires. And week four, he's completely out. So it was... It's, it's good to have some nice pieces in, in reserve for when you're all world everything under non-durable breaks down at the slightest sight of contact deandre swift gets hurt so and uh jay willie just to make sure that he got up to 20 touches on the day had one catch for one yard good job on you jay willie 20 touches i i, I was calling for you to have 20 touches jared goff spread the rock around him he hit one two three four five six seven eight he had eight receivers jared goff hit eight wide receivers threw for almost 400 yards and four touchdowns without Amon Ra St. Brown in the lineup, without DeAndre Swift in the lineup, with a patchwork offensive line. Jared Goff is not the problem. Aaron Glenn and the defense is the problem. Our offense had 27 first downs. Not bad. I'd like to bump that up to 30, right? 30 first downs is pretty good pretty good pace for the game four and ten on third down so bravo great job great job we 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 had 40 percent success rate on third down great job guys typical fucking typical man oh hey let's all get really high because roll the dice dan was three of three on fourth down doesn't matter that we're in the position where we have to go for it on fourth down doesn't matter that we're consistently having to do these trickery these roll the dice plays these going for it's because well our defense can't stop anybody doesn't matter doesn't matter hey let's get really high on the fact that we're three of three on fourth down yeah let's get really high on that let's not get really sober on the four of ten third down let's get really high on the on the three for three on fourth down we ran 66 plays which is kind of crazy when you think about we ran more plays with a lower score in Minnesota last week than we did here at home against Seattle where we put up 45 points. When your defense is letting the other team score seemingly at will, uh, they can punt. Oh wait, that's right, Seattle didn't punt at all. <laughs> that's right! So we had fewer opportunities because Seattle was on the fucking field the whole goddamn game. Aaron Glenn, top-notch defensive coordinator. Big brain, 10,000 IQ, so great, so great! He's going to be a head coach somewhere. So great. He's so, so smart. He is the world's best defensive coordinator. We've never even seen a defensive coordinator like Aaron Glenn before. Ooh, he's so special. He's so smart. Well, dude, I haven't... <laughs> I haven't seen anything. Not one fucking thing in the two years you've been here to justify you being this just, just Einstein level of defensive coordinator. You punted twice. We, we, we put Jack Fox out there three times. He punted twice, which is twice as many times as the Seattle Seahawks were forced to punt. Eight flags for 59 yards. We had one fumble, one INT that some of you are just so fucking hung up on that that pick six cost us the game and look i know what well, well well dan campbell came out and said that that pick six was very costly yeah dan campbell setting the foundation so that we can move on from jared goff and we can waste another first round pick on a quarterback that we don't need because jared goff is actually paying at an elite level oh that's right that's what he's doing He's defending AG because he thinks AG is the man. He's throwing Goff under the bus because Jared Goff isn't his guy. Jared Goff is a Brad Holmes guy. And Dan Campbell isn't a Brad Holmes hire. I'm starting to think that there might be some fuckery afoot. One fumble, one INT, and we had the ball for uh, 26 minutes. Please tell me how the offense is the problem. With numbers like that, with the roster that we rolled out on Sunday, when you had FedEx employees at your wide receiver core, when you were having to force feed a floundering TJ Hawkinson and made him look like an all-star because Ben Johnson is the one, one of the best offensive coordinators in the game, please tell me how the offense is the problem. Please, I would love to hear your arguments. Drop a comment down below. 
how it is that our offense is the problem. How our offense, which is the number one offense in all of football, the highest scoring offense with Jared Goff on pace to throw for Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Jared Goff on pace to throw for 44 touchdowns to scrubs. Okay. Please somebody tell me how our offense is the problem. I'd love to hear it down below. Drop a comment down below. That's going to do it for me, guys. We're going to have another video out. It'll be a lot shorter about the defense because I think you got in the last video exactly how I feel about our defense where I just completely melted down for 15 minutes. But you know what? You got to get it out of your system one way or another. Our defense is trash. Our offense is legit. I've been Hat and Beard. You guys have been a wonderful audience. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.